All right, troops, Yoko and Uni presents. Right, me and the troops at Yoker Uni are taking a plunge man and heavy tanning and use version of the physics hire this year. This video's for all you man that are getting ripped into the new hire too. Don't worry if he's on there this year, you will need to know this crap sooner or later. One of the things you need to heavy understand is this standard model. It's got nothing to do with birds, like if a bird is good looking you wouldn't go, oh aye man, she's a standard model. Actually, it's much copy of that Dave Aldo, that's Dino by the way. <coughs> it's all today with what the heavy buttons are up to in America and Switzerland, because there's a wee bit of a button barney going on between Fermilab and Chicago American, and CERN doing in Geneva, Switzerland. These two things are the two biggest particle colliders in the world. Fermilab is called the Tevatron, which is a quality name by the way. CERN have the LHC, which stands for Large Hadron Collider or something. They're both in the pure race for Saddle is trying to be the first one to find a Higgs boson. Whatever the hell a Higgs boson is. We're actually going to visit one for a bit of research because we're going to copy one of them and pure make our own particle collider in Yoka under the old train line called the HMBB which stands for the Heavy Massive Bob Asher. Bet you we pure find that Ryan Higgs boson thing first. But we don't know what land to visit, because the thing is, me and the troops always have a wee night out when we go abroad and always end up getting into bother with the local Neds and that, you know what I mean? American Neds have pure got their guns and that's heavy dodgy. Neds in Switzerland have the mad Swiss army knife thing, so it's like, are you going to try and chip me or open a tin of tuna? We fancy our chances in Switzerland, to be honest. So what is the point in these big kings? Well, the bigger they are, the pure bigger magnets they can have to accelerate wee mad tiny particles called protons around the ring tunnels, then smash a proton going one way into a proton going the other way. It's just like a big game of conkers, you know what I mean? Turns out when you smash two wee protons into one another, they pure explode. Thing is though, protons are pure tiny and when they get to that size it just explodes into the smaller wee things that make them up. So it turns out the atoms are made for smaller things and the things are made up for even smaller things too. The standard model is just how we pure group and show all the wee mad things that come off the atoms when you blow them up and that, you know. If it your brain, don't worry, cause it's supposed to. Here we go. The observationable universe is everything that we can pure see and also can see. And we also include Dundee in that as well, right? Everything in the universe and that is made up for atoms. Molecules and crab are made up for atoms, alright? But an atom itself is made up for two or three smaller things called protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons and neutrons and a thing in the middle called a nucleus. And a wee mad buzzy electron things that pure fire in the nucleus get heavy mad with it. All your mad atoms are fun in the periodical table. Each type of atom has a name, a symbol and an atomic number, which is the number of protons an atom has, and an atomic mass number, which is the number of protons plus neutrons in a nucleus of an atom. No. For a stable atom, the electrons are the same number as your protons. If an atom is the same size as Home Park, where the mighty yoke and athletic play, so the electrons pure far on the edge of the stadium, then a nucleus would be about the size of a P on the centre circle. Remember that protons are the same everywhere in the universe. Different atoms come about because they've got different numbers of protons and that, but the protons are all the same as each other, alright? Same for neutrons. A neutron is a neutron is a neutron. But that is too easy now for physics. Because what makes up protons and neutrons? Now we have to use the results for particle colliders that have been done in the last century and that. When you smash enough these wee things together and you have a right good swatch of the bits that fly off during the wee collision, then you get a picture of what they're made up for. Now we've got a standard model. Right, protons and neutrons are actually made up for three smaller hangies called quarks, which have a flavour. What you about, <laughs> No, a type. But a flavour, what a pure buffy idea by the way. They're pure made for up quarks and down quarks. Two ups and one down for a proton, two downs and one up for a neutron. Simple so far but alright. Electrons turn out to be pure fundamental like quarks, so they're no made up for anything so they get a pure look in our standard model. There's also another wee mad thingy called an electron neutrino. Remember my mental lecture on momentum? Well it turns out that sometimes a wee mad neutron has a wee like, atomic dump 
and pure fires out a wee electron which pure Chinese and neutron into a proton. This mad electron has a beta decay or beta radiation. Thing is though, if that's all that happens then some energy has done the bunk and your momentum is not conserved. So something else has to get pure popped out with the electron to balance your mad energy and momentum rules and all that right. Where it goes we have near a scoop man, cause it fires a bit at nearly the speed of light and pure fires through matter like a curry for big Derek sings and then take away. So you think I'm pure talking about an electron neutrino, but I'm only I'm talking about an electron anti neutrino. Cause all your mad particles have an anti particle which is identical but opposite in some things like charge and that. Anyway. Turns out an electron neutrino comes out when a proton changes into a neutron when it purifies out a positron, which is the electron's antiparticle. Aye, right man, you don't get this level of rubbish on Jeremy Kyle, I tell you that for nothing. Right, so Brian Cox, who was like the keyboard player in Metallica or some pop band like right, said all we really need is these four things here and the pure antiparticles, which is coosty for me. But there's pure four mere particles which are the exact same as the four we need, except they are a wee bit heavier, you know what I mean? Then it turns out there's actual four mere, and these ones are even heavier. Quarks are pure charm, then strange, then top and bottom. All six names for quarks are the most stupid names ever, by the way. They should have came to Valdo to name the quarks, but never mind, big chap. The bigger electrons called the muon, then even bigger one is the tau. Then you have the bigger neutrinos. Then obviously you've got your mad 12 antiparticles too. <laughs> Electrons and neutrinos are called leptons. Leptons and quarks are all called fermions. Free quarks make up protons and neutrons. But pure mental combinations can make up all sorts of weird things. Free out your six quarks make up hadrons and all sorts. You can also have quarks and anti-quark combinations which are called mesons. By the way, these heavier fermions don't hang about for long and heavy decay into the lighter versions and that goes for all the mad other hadrons and mesons they make up too. Some of them only hang about for a few microseconds before breaking up into mere regular fermions. Catch your breath, big chap, cause the excrement will shortly be hitting the fan. If you think you're getting it, then think again, by the way. There's another wee bit we need to pop onto the standard model. In the universe, there's pure four types of forces. Gravity, electromagnetism, which is how atoms interact with each other and all that. Weak force, which causes beta decay in an atoms, protons or neutrons. And strong force, which keeps quarks all wrapped up in protons and neutrons. Well, it turns out that these forces pure involve, wait for it, mere particles called bosons. Oh no man, you're ripping it now, aren't you? Think about it this way. You've got a wee yo-yo and you fan about with it and you chuck it out and it comes back to you. You dare it all the time, right? Eventually though, a wee button comes along and catches your yo-yo and keeps it. So now he's got it. So you've lost a wee bit of energy and he's got a wee bit of energy. Well this is how the force is felt between two particles. That's almost exactly sort of kind of what happens, but no really. Your mad standard model particles are pure chundering out billions of these force particles all the time which pure come back to themselves. But some get pure sucked up by the other particles and that's how force is pure transferred. So your mad weak force only works for heavy small distances inside protons and neutrons and forces beat a decay. Your mad W bosons and Z bosons do this. Strong force is how your quarks stay in place cause the bosons called gluons and this only works over small distances inside protons and neutrons as well. Electromagnetical force is how electrons and protons fart about with each other. If you want to feel this then slap your face and you will pure feel the effects of this force. It can pure be felt up to infinite distances and the particles that make this force up is called the photon. The last one is gravity, which is pure infinite distance too, and the boson particle for it is called the graviton. But we can't even find the graviton, nobody knows where it is. We only think it's there, like the Ryan Higgs boson thing, which we can't even find either. 
That's what Phenomenal I've been saying they're all about, and also what our HMBB will be all about, trying to find the Graviton and the Ryan Higgs thing. So here he's going in the standard model. There are other things that are on it, like the mass of particles in a weird unit called EV, and some mad thing called a charge. The electron is negative one charge, and the proton is positive one charge. Some things, no charge. Quarks are pure fractions of charges because only exist in groups and they make up charges of whole numbers. The last wee number thing is spin. I have no clue about spin, right? I've not got a scooby about it. It's all quantum physics and all that. We'll leave that for another rainy Glasgow day, alright? What does all this mean to use? Probably nothing. Glasgow will still be Glasgow. Your chippy will still taste magic. And you can go about your life as normal. But this stuff is fact and it's how universe is made up. One last thing, these big dino particle colliders, pure smart hadrons at high energy, and some idiot said it would make a black hole and swallow the earth. Eh, no, I don't think so. Cosmic rays, pure smash into particles in our atmosphere, we made energy all the time, and they black holes yet, yeah, daft, they alright. Nothing worse than a fickle journalist with no clue about physics spouting verbal diarrhea to scare you all. Don't have nightmares, big chap, enjoy your physics this year.